Ever since the Benelli Imperiale 400 broke cover, which was at the 2017 Milan Motor Show, this motorcycle has been a subject of great interest for the Indian motorcycle market. And of course, it's obvious why. Not only does it sit bang in Royal Enfield territory, this motorcycle also looks strikingly similar to some of the Royal Enfields, and that is a brand that needs no introduction as one of the most popular brands for retro classic motorcycles. And that, I think, is reason enough for me to swing a leg over and tell you what this bike is like to ride. At first glance, it's easy to say that the Imperiale looks a lot like the Royal Enfields, especially with the round headlamp, the teardrop-shaped fuel tank, the split seat, full metal fenders, and the long exhaust. But take a closer look, and you will realize that this motorcycle has a lot of interesting design elements, and in that sense, it has a character of its own when it comes to the visual appeal. A lot of manufacturers making classic motorcycles today try to blend retro cues to modern ones, but Benelli has stuck to the simplest of designs with the Imperiale 400. The bike thus looks like one that came straight out of the 1950s, especially with its low slung stance and long wheelbase, and looks nice from almost all angles. In fact, if the number of heads it turned are anything to go by, the Imperiale 400 is sure to get some serious attention on the road. The chrome finished wire spoke wheels complement the bike's retro stance nicely too and contrast well with the rest of the motorcycle. I also like the golden colored pinstripes on the fuel tank as they lend a very classic appeal to the tank design as does the quilted design of the tank pads. The Benelli Leo or Lion finds its place of pride on top of the cylinder head while the fuel injectors get plastic covers to add to the bike's retro appeal. Same is the case with the twin pod instrument cluster, which looks nice and also packs in a lot of information, unlike the Javas or the Royal Enfields. On the Imperiale, you get a digital fuel gauge, gear indicator, two trip meters, and a large tachometer and speedometer, all arranged very neatly. Attention to detail overall is thus excellent, and Benelli has certainly done a commendable job here in terms of replicating motorcycles from the past. Build quality is nice as well, and clearly, the Italian manufacturer has worked hard on ensuring that fit finish levels are a lot better than what we have seen on its products in the past. The rear brake pedal is certainly an eyesore though. Its design again belongs to motorcycles from the past as well, but it looks out of place on an otherwise well-designed motorcycle. Interestingly, Benelli has also spec'd this motorcycle very close to the Royal Enfield 350s. So this motorcycle, the Imperiale 400, is powered by a long-stroke 374cc air-cooled single-cylinder engine that puts out 21 PS and 29 newton meters of torque and is mated to a 5-speed gearbox. But despite it not having the thumb that a lot of you would be looking for, I have to tell you that the exhaust note on the Imperiale is distinctive and is very pleasing to the ears. A lot of buyers consider the Royal Enfield thumb as a benchmark of sorts for retro motorcycles when it comes to the exhaust note, and that lot of buyers might thus be disappointed with the Imperialis sound. But the moment you move away from that thought, you're sure to appreciate the exhaust note. More importantly, I like the fact that despite using what is termed as a long stroke motor, the Imperialis engine is rather quick to build revs. Performance is adequate and the bike is reasonably quick to accelerate, though the 205kg curb weight can be felt when accelerating hard. The bike is best enjoyed when riding unhurriedly, though the Imperiale does not particularly disappoint when riding enthusiastically. 0 to 60 km per hour came up in just over 5 seconds in our V-Box test, which is pretty decent, though 100 km per hour took longer at 13.36 seconds. The bike runs out of steam at just a little over 120 km per hour on the speedometer, but interestingly, the engine does not feel particularly stressed even at the speed. In fact, the engine feels refined overall, with just a bit of vibration from the foot pegs, which is quite impressive. What's more, there's literally no vibration coming in from the handlebars, which means your hands will remain buzz-free even on longer rides, translating to lesser fatigue overall. The 5-speed gearbox offers a light feel and precise gear changes, which further add to the bike's appealing manners, though clutch effort at the lever could have been lesser. Overall, the Imperialis powertrain impresses, especially with its refinement levels. The Imperiale 400 certainly impresses in terms of ride and handling as well, and in fact, I'm pleasantly surprised at how good the ride quality is. 
The suspension setup is firm, but despite that, the bike cushions the rider well from bumps, undulations and potholes, and this certainly adds to its touring virtues. And then there's the party trick, which are the springs under the rider's seat. A spring-loaded seat for the rider is again something seen only on motorcycles from several decades ago, but come to think of it, it works quite well in terms of cushioning the rider from shocks, as the shock absorbers and springs under the seat work together like a two-stage suspension system. The cushioning of the seat is also firm and it allows you to spend longer time in the saddle without the need to get off it. Overall, the suspension setup, the spring-loaded seat, and firm cushioning together make for a likeable package as far as the ride quality is concerned and in that sense, the Imperiale should be a good choice for riding distances. The wide handlebar and upright seating position work well to the same effect, though I would have liked the foot pegs to be positioned either slightly forward or towards the rear as the current positioning is not the very best. And with a 19-inch front and 18-inch rear wheel, this motorcycle is not really meant for corner carving. In fact, it's more of a laid-back motorcycle that's meant to be ridden over long distances, but it handles well and it impresses around corners in terms of the confidence it offers. And this is something that adds to its credentials. The suspension setup and chassis offer a confident feel thus, but the TVS Remora tires the Imperiale is shot with could have offered slightly better grip. While they do not disappoint entirely, it is easy to reach their limits around corners and that also makes me wonder as to how good the tyres will feel on wet roads. Overall, the bike masks its weight well though and offers a confident feel, be it around corners or when riding in traffic. Stability at triple digit speeds is also impressive and the Imperiale allows you to sustain speeds on highways as it does not twitch or get unsettled easily. To sum it up, it's easy to dismiss the Imperiale 400 as yet another retro classic motorcycle that's trying to be a Royal Enfield. But the fact is that despite its striking resemblance to the classic 350 in particular, this motorcycle has a character of its own. It looks good, the build quality is definitely a lot better than what we have seen on older Benelli's, the engine offers adequate performance and feels refined too, and of course the gearbox is quite nice, but most importantly, the motorcycle is comfortable and handles reasonably well too. Now, Benelli is nowhere close to Royal Enfield in terms of the sales and service network, but the brand is working on that and is ramping up operations. Now, this motorcycle is priced at Rs 1.69 lakh X showroom, which is a bit of a premium of the Classic 350 and varies depending on which version of the Classic you're looking at. But as a package, as a retro motorcycle that you can also go touring on, this is certainly a motorcycle that impresses. Mm.